<coughs> Welcome everybody. Uh, our last meeting of 2022 uh, for December the 21st, 2021. Sorry, 21. I call this meeting to order. Firstly, we acknowledge that we are on First Nation land, Turtle Island, inhabited by First Nations from time of immemorial. For, the, for, those, for thousands of years, First Nations people, the Soto, Cree, Dakota, Oji, Cree nations walked and lived on this land and knew it to be the center of their lives and spirituality. We acknowledge this land became the homeland of the Red River Métis people. We also acknowledge that we are now all bound together by Treaty 4. Result of the agenda for the December 21st, 2021 regular meeting of council be adopted, moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. All in favor? It's carried. Result of the minutes of the December 7th, 2021 regular council meeting be approved, moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Delorier, it's carried. Receptions and delegations, first we have with us tonight, the RCMP, we have Star Staff Sergeant Duncan and also Sergeant Henson with us in discussion or update on our recent uh, crime spree in, in the area that we all are quite aware of and uh, the community uh, concerns. So. I'll uh, let uh, the gentleman begin, and uh, if there's any questions or concerns, we will uh, further discuss. Yep. So welcome, thank and then thank you. Thank you, Mayor and Council, for uh, inviting us here tonight to, to discuss this, this ongoing issue. So I do want to start off by saying that uh, we have been receiving um, some numerous reports of mischief and, and vandalism complaints uh, throughout the community of Swan River. Just wanted to clarify a few items here. Um, these, these occurrences, are being reported and they are occurring during all hours of the day. So they're occurring during days, during evenings, during nights, and there's really no particular cycle to it. Um, we are dispatching members when we, they are unavailable and when they are able to attend. Um, I would just like to bring into the community's attention that um, I understand that people are becoming frustrated with these crimes and a lot of people think, well, the RCMP can't do anything because it's very limited information. We just want to iterate that it's very important that every single one of these occurrences is reported to us, either by our dispatch line, by calling our office during regular business hours. We also have an online crime reporting tool through the RCMP main website, which is at rcmp-grc.gc.ca. This is where individuals can report uh, minor thefts, uh, minor vandalisms, and what will happen is it will be dispatched to a member and the member will follow up. So, Again with that, I would just like to reiterate communication within our partners. Um, we have been working with the town and the councillors on addressing this issue. So if there's any questions. Hey, council. <clears throat> Councillor White. Do you, do you have any suggestions for the lay person or can be myself, others, where we could be a little more proactive to help you guys? Absolutely. I think um, if you see something that is suspicious, again, just reporting it to us, making us aware, providing us with that in information and intelligence so that we can look at how we're going to coordinate our response. I'll maybe have Sergeant Henson just quickly touch base on the COPP program, and that's another option for, for committee members as well to help out. There's been a couple of good articles in the Star Times, uh, just today's paper, and essentially with uh, the COPP, uh, John is well aware of it as well, but it's, it's really come together. Um, we have a lot of people are participating. Uh, essentially, we link with them through the WhatsApp. I, I look at it frequently day and night, not always, but frequent enough. We have communication. Um, I've sent out emails based on what I've seen on the WhatsApp. I uh, also read the reports that come in on a regular basis at the end of their shifts during the COPP. Uh, we've opened up files, we send out detachment wide uh, emails, I request the COPP target certain areas, I requested RCP target certain areas at certain times, and there's been, there is a coordinated effort. 
and I'm quite pleased with the COPB. It's an opportunity for community members to show that they want to do things proactively for the community and basically it's you're out there and people go there day night we, we appreciate the day patrols as well as the night patrols and evening patrols because crime doesn't really care what time of day it is and essentially that uh, when you got certain descriptions of certain people uh, we cross-reference what we see with our members and sometimes we can identify who's where and essentially it helps us to build well, our intelligence about what's going on. You're on. Just to follow up, I think uh, uh, Staff Sergeant Duncan, you alluded to the possibility, uh, for sure, when COVID slows down the road, which of course it will, I'm a science guy, uh, the possibility of having a, a town hall meeting where the community could come in and offer suggestions where we could work to work together, look at the accolades, look at the positive things we can do, and failing at the uh, live in-person town hall meeting, you mentioned the possibility of an uh, uh, online Zoom meeting for people who want to participate. Yes, absolutely. This is a very unique time, and especially with the pandemic, a lot of the, the in-person meetings aren't able to happen. But uh, we as a detachment are more than willing to uh, participate in a town hall virtually, and when restrictions are, and are lifted uh, to it in person, um, this would be focused on providing you know, just some some communication, some transparency to the community, and as well as answering some of the questions that they may have. Well, if, if we as counselors can help, but I certainly volunteer myself, when it comes time maybe next year to set up, maybe try the virtual one first, we can advertise it, the Star and Times is here, I'm sure they would help, and uh, we'd look at a way to make that happen sooner than later. Absolutely, I'm yeah. willing to participate 100% yeah. and as soon as we can do it. I'm glad to hear that because I think that that's important, you know, like for myself and, and listening to some of the business community. Uh, in the last few days, it's been quite difficult. Some of these business owners and landlords, you know, they're paying up to ten thousand dollars in in uh, in uh, insurance uh, coverage, you know, and and it's getting to be a point where they're at the breaking point, and it's it's very concerning. And we realize. Your, your concern, our concern too, and, and as community people, and I think that we need to keep that communication, but I would like to see if we can kind of pull in, you know, the, the people, as Councillor White said, if it's a town hall kind of meeting, if we can do it by Zoom and invite, because I'm sure that some of those people would be more than willing to, uh, to participate. Yes, absolutely. It's a, it's a community issue, and we got to work together as a community to try and resolve it. Councillor Delorier. Um, you highlighted on the, the frustration that the community is feeling, and I, and I think you're, you're right on that. Is there anything we can, and you know what, I think a town hall is great, communication is great. Is there anything we can do in like the near term? Is there any change we can rattle, um, you know, to get additional support from for you guys? Do we go talk to somebody in D Division? You know, I, I liken it to in, in the healthcare system, there's the uh, itinerant doctors or there's the, the contract nurses they bring in when, you know, when, you know, when you have a situation and, and here, here, you know, we have a, it's, it's, our crime is high, but it's abnormally high right now, or it seems right. that way. Right. Is there any resources that can be, you know, sent to hot spots like, like I assume we are right now? Um, and is there any chains we can rattle higher up that can get that, that help for you? Uh, we really, really appreciate the, the, the effort and, and the assistance on that. Um, Manitoba West District, which is what we're part of, has created a crime reduction team. Uh, we can look at, at channeling that team and bringing them in for assistance. Again, it's, it's got to really come down to that intelligence to, to help us coordinate when we're going to delegate resources. Um, with that being said, uh, petitioning the province to seek additional resources for us would be, would be fantastic and would, would help us out greatly. Okay, anything? Uh, Councillor Bobbitt. So you, you spoke of a website where people could go and put stuff down. Would that be something that town should look at a link to our website where they could go? For sure, that? yes. Okay. You know, and, and Absolutely. Would there be, I guess, on that link, would it be able to explain what to do and how to do it all? It's a, very, it's a very easy step-by-step -step process. It's okay. very, um, like the first question is, where do you live? And then it goes, what kind of is it? Um, did someone steal something from you? Did something someone break something? It's very, very methodical step in a step by step. 
And I, again, like with the COVID stuff, maybe more people would be comfortable in using this. So I think maybe it's something we could look into putting on our Absolutely. website. Where yeah. People sometimes, yeah. I'm not saying they don't want to get a hold of the police, but would rather go through yeah. the Yeah. And we, again, we encourage everyone. I know a lot of people don't want to report things because I don't think we have the time to do it. I understand that we have a lot of challenges, but we want every single occurrence. We want everything reported to us so that we can strategically plan to, to deal with these issues. Have you considered? Deputy Mayor Tony. Go ahead, Councillor White. Have you considered doing a news release uh, alluding to these uh, suggestions? Actually, uh, Sergeant Henson and I talked about that on the way out here, and we're going to look at engaging local media to, to, to bring some of this to the community's attention. So for, for sure. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you, uh, Staff Sergeant Duncan and, and Sergeant Henson, for coming to uh, to our council table I, I, I as you know I'm involved with the COPP program as well but first of all thank you for being here thank you for the service that you provide to our community um, to all those businesses who uh, who have been affected in in our community I definitely feel your pain as a pre previous business owner um, in those situations and my current role that I'm in I, I deal with issues on an ongoing daily basis um, so I do feel your pain for that. Um, it is unfortunate that we are in a situation that we are. I don't think we're unique to that situation. Um, it's more prevalent in our community because I think our community is very well known and, and uh, in terms of each other, knowing each other, and um, word travels much quicker in a smaller town than it is does in a larger center. So. Um, for that, I think that there's a lot more awareness, but I feel um, that every community is in the same situation that we are. I do have a couple points that I do want to uh, jump on here. Um, again, thank you to all that you do. I know that uh, there is a lot of feedback and a lot of um, not so positive comments made towards the police in, in our community and I, I disregard that I believe that you do you and your team are doing the best job that you can with the resources that are available um, I think that when we look at this and we talk about what can we do for uh, the community there are a lot of things that we can do to aid you and you've touched on those in terms of communication and providing that information to to you um, with my current role, obviously, we, we do provide footage, uh, reports on an ongoing basis of these individuals and of situations that do occur. So I encourage every business to do that. At the same time, our businesses and our, the local people within our community, we need to uh, come together and, and do our part as well. We can't, uh, we can't just blame somebody. And I think when things happen in the negative, our first line of defense is to always blame somebody so let's uh, let's be proactive let's do some things to help ourselves let's ensure that our camera systems are working on our on our facilities let's ensure that we can do that again I, I feel the pain and there are is costs associated with that and COVID has been brought many challenges but uh, when we're when we're looking at a, a holistic approach to the entire Valley, we need to look at those options, keeping your lights on, ensuring that your area is well lit, and of course, join, joining programs like the COPP, and I will touch on that. We have 22 members that are fully trained in the COPP, and we have another set um, that is waiting to be trained as well. We have an amazing support from the community for the COPP in terms of providing gift cards for gas to help offset the cost for those volunteers flashlights, equipment, anything that we need, we do have um, sources to get that. And I encourage each and every one of those people to join. Um, the COPP program isn't something that is mandated on how many calls or how many ride outs you have to, have to give. It's a give what you can when you can. And we have many uh, members part of that. Um, but we're always looking for more. And the more eyes and ears that we can have on the street, the more that we see, the more information that we can provide to our resources, which is the RCMP, the better they can do their job. So my roundabout conclusion is thank you very much for what you are doing in our community, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Anything further? Councillor Baldwin. Just, we talked about the website, but I just want to know how we're gonna move forward and get this in place. 
It's it's as simple as setting up a link. What we can inform Lana and, and get it running this week. Okay. Yeah, I just sent an email. Like, okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, I, I on council or deputy mayor uh, when Tony's comments, you know, and, and definitely a COPP is something that we had years ago and it was successful and it's good to see that it's back here again and it, it can only help us uh, in the future and, and definitely for people that are interested in, in volunteering for that, the, you know, they're very valuable to the community regardless if you live in the town of Swan River or outside the periphery or wherever it might be, we need your help. Uh, but also at the same time, there has been comments, you know, some, you know, either mistrust or whatever with RCMP, and and uh, and, and I certainly think that we we can, you know, nip that in the bud, so to speak, if we move towards, say, something like a town hall or something, and and increase that communication. I think that's really key to this because at the end of the day, no matter what we know is that the buck stops right here. And everybody in this community looks at us and says, what are you guys going to do about this? And so we all need to work together to get to some resolve, communicate. I think it's a big key thing and start working on if it's COPP, the consortium and, and so forth. And, and council with the RCMP is so key. And, and uh, I, I trust that we'll get there. It's painful. And I know I realize that. And some people have said, man, this has been going on for more than a, a year. But, you know, um, it's, it's small steps. And yes, COVID, we don't want to blame everything on COVID. But some things uh, with COVID have been held back a little bit. So I trust that in the new year, if we kind of get working on this here, short term in the new year, that we can start to work on it and uh, maybe find some resolve to it. Absolutely. Anything further, Councillor Delorier? Um, I believe it's a community in the inner lake, either maybe Lunda or Asher, and they have public, uh, you know, cameras on their on their main street on the in their business area, you know, provided by the municipality. Okay. How useful would that be, or, or have, have have you talked to other detachments where that is? You know, I think I, I, when I went over to, to London, England, there's cameras, municipal cameras everywhere. You're always on camera. So is, is that something that would be helpful in situations like we've been experiencing the last couple of weeks? Or is it, or do the stores already have enough cameras where you have the footage you need? It's just identifying the people type thing. I, I think it's the more cameras you have, the better. The more that you can capture, the better. Um, sometimes cameras, I mean, especially in this COVID world where someone's wearing a mask going into an establishment, it, it, when someone's outside they're not required to wear a mask, so that it will help. Any, any additional video footage we can get will help. Um, just personally speaking, I used to work at D Division headquarters, we had cameras all over the place and we had um, some, some occurrences out there, we utilized that video footage from the city of Winnipeg, so very helpful. Okay, anything further? Okay, well, again, thank you, gentlemen. We'll be talking again in, shortly in the new year. On behalf of Council, we do wish you the best of the uh, holiday season and, and the best of night, or 2022. Thank you very much. You thank as well. You. Thank you. Okay, continue on with our uh, delegations. We have with us tonight Ms. Kazakov to discuss the flow level 3 DC car chargers in Swan River. Welcome to uh, <coughs> Council. Thank you very much for having me. Um, so it's interesting because while I was researching this and researching grants, I realized that I know very little about what municipal government does. And um, so I, I'm hopefully looking forward to working with you. Um, and then talking with Derek Poole today, I realized that um, my understanding of municipal government was definitely lacking too. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself because I realize that's important. So I'm a teacher at ESRSS and um, I, in the summer months, I'm the lady on the bucket bike and in the winter months, I drive an electric car. Um, and, oh, and that is my hands. All of my hands are. These are Sarah's hands. Oh, perfect. Okay, do you want one? Oh, okay, perfect. Um, there's a timeline for everyone. Um, I printed off, or I had David print off, like, a couple of the grants. And then also um, the beginning of the RFP that I did. 
Um, so basically, um, we moved to Swan River two years ago, um, and I have two kids, and David is obviously a doctor in the community. Um, we intend to stay here. I, I've lived many different places in my life, and this is my favorite. I love Swan River, and I find it so ironic that the RCMP were here talking about safety because this is actually one of the communities that I felt the most safe. I am safe when I bike. And I don't think I can express how much I appreciate that, the ability to ride. I've been riding with my daughter in the bike since she was nine months old. And I have had cars stop for me. I have had people try and help me um, go up a hill when I was stuck in the snow. Um, and so I love this community. I want to contribute to it. And I want to see it thrive. And this, uh, this past summer, the fires and the drought it left me deeply concerned um, because this community is in essence a farming community. If you look around us, we are surrounded by farmland. And so the only way to help the farmers is by taking these steps towards a greener future. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the charger and why I think a 50 kilowatt is a good choice for this community. Um, so the 50 kilowatt charger, it can charge a car in an hour. So the current chargers that are in town, they charge a car in five hours. They also don't work because they're owned, they're owned by private businesses and they have to be maintained. And the fact of the matter is, the businesses aren't seeing enough of a benefit, so they're not maintaining them because they have other clientele. But the thing is, electric car owners, we are a growing percentage of the motor vehicle owners. And also, these are the kind of, these are people that you want to attract electric car owners. Right now, tend to be the upper middle class people. They are becoming more affordable. That's definitely something that is on the horizon. But these are the people that are going to spend money here. And so I want to bring people in because 92%, this is according to Flo, who sells the electric car chargers, of people spend money where they charge. I, being an electric car owner, I feel like that is a low estimate. I feel like it's more like 100% because you have to stop for coffee. You're not going to sit in your car for an hour, particularly when it's cold. You're going to go and get a meal. You're going to go and pick up diaper wipes when you've forgotten them. And this gives people an opportunity to walk down our main street and appreciate our stores. I remember the first time that I came to Swan River, I spent just a morning wandering around and exploring. and. That would give all of these people who own electric cars the opportunity to do that. And I know that it's a question of why would we do that? But it's kind of a, if you build it, they will come sort of thing. And also 20 years ago, there would have been a lot of questions about why a town would need internet access or cell phone service. But now it's a vital part of our economy's well-being, and that's where we're moving. So as a town, that is sustainable. As a town that wants its businesses to thrive, we need to have the amenities that people are going to want. So the car charger, I am gonna give you the cost for it. Um, and I, I got these costs directly from Dauphin. So Dauphin installed an identical car charger. And so it was, um, was 56,000 for the car charger. And so what they did was they applied for grants they got 90% of the money through grants. Unfortunately, the grants aren't that sweet. Um, they, as a requirement of the Sustainable Communities Grant, they had to have 10% from private businesses. And um, so then once they had the grant money, they did um, a request for a proposal and handed it off to Johns Electric, who then installed the car charger. And so the total cost for the project was $83,000. That includes um, the upgrade of the transformer because you need three phase power. So before coming to this meeting, I wanted to make sure that I had enough information for all of you. So here has three phase power. We're close to it, it wouldn't be too much. Um, another option is Manitoba Hydro. Um, as an EV owner and as a mom, I'm gonna say that's not my favorite option in town, but it might be the cheapest um, if you wanted to install a car, uh, like a stall there. Um, another option would be Quick Stop. Um, and I talked to uh, Pam Gelsinger today, and I know that the area, they own the area that is paved, but the area that is unpaved is owned by somebody, and they obviously aren't using it, so they probably 
be interested in having something there. And so I just wanted to give you options. So let me just walk you through how this would be paid for. So 50% of the, co the cost of the entire project would be covered by the sustainable Building Sustainable Communities Grant, and that's by the government of Manitoba. And now this is the part where we kind of have to move a little bit fast, but that's on me, that's not on you. Um, it closes on January 17th. I want to head this project. I, it, as I'm learning more about municipal government, you have enough on your plate. I knew that beforehand, but I now especially, I want to head this project. I want to see this through. I can guarantee that we are going to be here for a minimum of three additional years because David signed a five-year return of service. I would like to stay longer. It, I've had to move every two years for a lot of time, uh, for a long time. So the idea of staying here for, you know, 20 is really attractive. Um, so half of it would be covered by the Sustainable Communities Grant. The other is um, the Zero Emission Vehicle Infrastructure Program, and that is a federal grant. That will give us $15,000 towards the cost of the charger. So if you're adding that up, if we're going to round up to um, 84000 just to make it nice and easy, 42000 is going to be covered by the um, provincial grant. 15000 is going to be covered by the federal grant. And now, this is a cause that is important to me. I am an environmentalist. I am a mom. I am a person who is invested in this community. And so I am putting forth 15000 of private funds and I will work to secure private funds. I wasn't sure whether, um, because again, I haven't dealt with municipal government before, I should approach businesses beforehand. I had made a meeting with the co-op. I know that in Dauphin, they had the co-op cover half of the private fee and the credit union cover the other half. I'm intending on going to speak with the co-op, well, I'm not intending, I'm speaking with the co-op tomorrow at 9 a.m. as soon as my kids are at school. And um, then I'm going to speak with the credit union. Um, and I also want to approach the dealerships in town because they will be benefiting from this. They'll be able to say, we have a charger in town. You should buy this electric car. It's going to cost you a little bit more at the start, but you're not going to have to replace brake pads. You're not going to have to change the oil. You're not going to have to pay for gas. So you should get it. And so I think that's a good reason and a good motivation for them to donate to the project. Um, so, are there any questions? There may be a few, so thank you very much. And, I, and one of your comments that you said about being in the, new in the community and how uh, you feel safe, uh, Council likes to hear that. So thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Delorier's first. Okay, um, I want to thank you for your presentation. It is well put together. You, you hit all the points that you needed to, to. And you know what? You don't even have to sell this to me. I am on board 100%. Um, I guess uh, my perspective on this, you know, a lot of things have come, to come together as far as electric vehicles in, in the last couple of years. And I think the biggest thing for me, and you know, I, I'm not wanting to tout any names, but the fact that Ford is releasing a, a pickup truck has made it so real for, for a lot of people that this is really happening. You know, people have talked about electric vehicles for, for 30 years now, maybe even longer. This is a real thing. And you know, there's, out, uh, almost 5% of the vehicles sold this year are electric vehicles. Yes. Now, that, that doesn't sound like a huge number, but that's almost double what it was last year. And, there, and I, I mean, the, the federal government has mandated that within eight years, 50% of the vehicles sold will be electric vehicles. So to not have one of these chargers is like in, in 1899, when, when Tent Town was in Minnetona to say, you know what, we don't want the railway to come to Swan River. That, that, that's the same kind of thing, you know, or your analogy as far as cell phones 30 years ago or internet 20 years ago, it, it, to me, this is a no-brainer. Um, I've, I've got a resolution draft that I'm going to bring forward, and in fact, I'm going to use my few minutes here to read it right now because often it doesn't get read when the, dele the delegate is here. Um, I'm going to bring it forward. Hopefully somebody will second it. So whereas electric and hybrid vehicles made up 3.5% of all sales in 2020 are poised to make up 4.6% of all vehicles in 2021, this number is only forecasted to increase in the coming years as the vehicle manufacturers work towards being the federal government's mandated uh, electric vehicle that uh, electric vehicles make up 50% of vehicles sold by 2030. Whereas the federal government has committed to funding 65,000 fast chargers 
uh, for 80, 880 million over the next four years. And whereas Swan River is already isolated with regards to transportation, with decrease in bus service, absence of air service, the lack of electric charging infrastructure will only isolate us further to a segment of the population that is rapidly growing. And whereas the town of Swan River recognizes that having fast charging capabilities locally will ensure that we are able to continue to promote ourselves both as a tourist destination as well as a place where travelers can stop and refuel uh, both their car and themselves. Um, to an ever-growing portion of the motoring population. Therefore, be it resolved that administration of the Town of Swan River begin planning and working towards having a level three fast charging station installed in the Town of Swan River in 2022. This directive shall be conditional upon re receiving the Sustainable uh, Communities Grant um, and the uh, Zero Emission Vehicle Infrastructure Grant. <coughs> it will also be resolved that the planning for the location of this charging situation should include a criteria with the ability to expand for future charging stations. So I. I guess I that that be the, my only ask is that we don't just landlock it to the one because we're going to need more of these things, um, and and I realize power is an issue, but I, you know it it it'll I'm sure there's locations where you know you can you can get two or three or four of these things because we're going to need them. It's being it, closer to the Manitoba Hydro, the quick stop would be ideal, and as a person who teaches the Gelsinger's kids and loves the Gelsinger's business I, and like you want a place that has long hours because when you arrive at 12 o'clock at night like my husband drove into Dauphin and he got there at 12 because he was driving from Winnipeg at like 7. Um, if Town Hall had been open he would have gone into Town Hall as it was he got to go into the 7-Eleven. Quick Stop has really long hours the Manitoba Hydro is right there and it definitely has three-phase power and there's definitely capability to increase and you want a place with a lot of space because when you're talking about it not being significant the five percent it is significant because we were in Riding Mountain this past summer and they have multiple car chargers they have um, at near the back of the park they have about eight and then on in like just off the main road they have two and we were not consistently waiting but there were cars waiting those stalls were filled and so you although i could understand city council wanting to have the charger right here because you would own it it would be a responsibility of the city and therefore you could see it this isn't a great parking lot for it because there isn't a lot of space um, when we pulled into dauphin hauling a trailer that was a little bit tricky. It was one of those things where we were crossing our fingers and hoping that nobody was going to be there. So that is that is incredible vision. And it, I, the charger itself won't make the city a lot of money. The charger will make the surrounding businesses, whatever you put it next to, or even within like half a kilometer for walking distance for an under five group, because you're talking about families, they're gonna make money off of this. And that pays the taxes. So I'm not sure why it will be next, but uh, go ahead and you finish up. I guess um, I, my, I'm not concerned with with it being right next to the town office. I, I agree. Put it somewhere where Dolphins is kind of out of the way. I don't think that's the best spot where it should have been put. Um, my only question is, uh, how come you chose Flow? You know, there's there's Green Lot. There's there's all sorts of ones and. 50 cool I think maybe you know people's expectations of how fast these things are going to charge are gonna it's it's like having an old cell phone as soon as you realize what what a smartphone can do nobody buys an old cell phone I, I worry that 50 kilowatts will be too slow going forward um, I guess what what was your feelings on, on or why did you why are you proposing what you're proposing uh, because there's a demand charge if you go above 50 kilowatts and so if you're trying to make money on electricity it becomes a little bit cost prohibitive um, and then also as you go bigger it gets a lot more expensive and so 50 kilowatts is that per that sweet spot in between you know slow because the the two chargers if they were functioning at PV Mart if they were functioning at Super 8 that's five hours I've sat in a parking lot with my husband at 2 a.m. waiting <laughs> the hour to like charge up so that we can go that additional um, like length home or distance home um, but it's not fun whereas 50 kilowatts you're talking about an hour to charge and that's reasonable an hour you if well I know for me personally an hour I can stop get the kids out of car seats 
maybe go to the washroom somewhere, maybe you know buy something and then get them back into the car seats. And um, so it's a reasonable time amount. So yes, um, that was the reason why I chose the 50 kilowatts because when you get more, when you go larger, it becomes a lot more expensive both for the cost of the unit and in terms of the cost of the electricity. Okay, my, my last point, since I still have, um, I guess I, I just wanted to reiterate a point that you had made as far as uh, people are planning out their trips based on where these smart chargers are. If, you know, I, I have friends that are looking at getting electric vehicles and they're looking already where these things are and they used to stop, say, in St. Rose for lunch all the time. They're saying, well, I guess I'm stopping in Nipua. If we don't have one of these things, people that did stop here or uh, won't be and people that need to stop here will be if we have one. And I think that's a huge key. You know, on, on our way to the meeting tonight, uh, Councillor and uh, White and I were having a discussion. He said, well, can't people just charge these things at home? You're not necessarily building them for the people here in Swan River. You're, no. you're building them for people. We, we, we like to tout ourselves as a tourism de destination. This is going to be huge. I think we need to do this. What you're doing is you're allowing people who are 200 kilometers away to purchase an electric vehicle. The only reason that we were able to purchase an electric vehicle is because Dauphin installed a charger there. We are not able to go to Yorkton because Yorkton doesn't have an electric car charger that is fast charger. If we want to go to Yorkton with our children, we have to plan an entire day, which means leaving the two-year-old at home because she naps. It's also very difficult to get from here to Saskatoon. Like when I talked about waiting in a parking lot at 2 a.m., that was what I had to do because there was only a slow charger in between Saskatoon and here. And so it, it makes it prohibitive. You're right, people will not visit. And this would actually connect us to a corridor of communities. There's a, there is a charger at Dauphin, there's a charger at Nipawa, there's a charger at Brandon, there's a charger at Portage, there's a charger at Winnipeg, Steinbeck, Prada, and Selkirk. And so when you're looking where people are going, Selkirk, Grand Beach, you're talking about cottage owners. They want to own an electric car, so they need one there. And so when you're talking, you are going to start to lose business if you don't have one here. That is absolutely a valid point. And we do stop at those places and spend money in those places because there are chargers there. That's a really valid point. Okay, <clears throat> so we'll move on to Councillor White. Thank you, both of you. You sure much of that on the way over. Uh, quite uh, illuminating. Uh, point of note, uh, they have a thunder buggy in Churchill right now that's solar power, electric power, whatever it is, so if they can run them in Churchill, I'm assuming this will never be okay. There's three things that pop to my mind. Government funds, I know that apparently there are funds from two levels there to buy these, but is it a fixed number, amount of monies per community? Could we apply for four or five of these, or can we just apply for one? Do you know the answer to that? Um, the, the amount changes. Um, per charger and for the project and so I'm I'm feeling a little bit remiss because I did not memorize the amount for a, a larger charger is it is actually a significantly larger amount for the zero emissions infrastructure program that's the federal grant um, and I believe um, for the sustainable communities grant you can apply for a larger amount I I want to say 150, but please don't quote me on that. So yes, we could have more. Um, I just question how many our community needs right now. I know for Dauphin, what I, I spoke um, for a long time with all of the people who were involved in the installation of the charger, both the person who started it, the person who finished the program. Um, and what they've said is they, they've had a lot more interest in it than they've expected. Um, in that there is a car there every other day. Um, so I think that that's an incredible vision that I wasn't expecting that you would want multiple. Um, I, I would just, I would question just the amount um, because there is such a significant difference in um, the cost that's covered by the government and the cost that would have to be covered privately either by um, the municipal government or by fundraising. Um, that might be a little bit prohibitive in terms of applying for or trying to install multiple chargers. But um, as an EV owner who has definitely crossed their fingers when they pulled into Dauphin being like, oh, I hope there's no car there, I'm in a hurry today. 
Um, I think that's fantastic. Um, oh, up. Wow. Uh, um, oh. It's the first come, first serve when you pull up to one of these things? Yes. Okay. I just wonder how. And uh, I think the last thing that's pretty important in my mind is I'd encourage uh, our staff and yourself to be in communication because you've obviously done a lot of homework and I'm assuming you can help them. Um, yes. No, I, I would obviously. You're cool, right? Um, it, uh, are you who I'd be working with? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I did want to say that I know I peppered you with questions. No, this that was wonderful. <laughs> but uh, you, you, you've done really well with that. Is yeah. No, I, I, I really didn't want to step on people's toes, and so I hadn't really prepared as much as I could have um, in talking with you. I prepared that timeline, and I realized that the federal grant would open and then it closed, and then they would have that decision in a much longer time frame than I had given you. And so that kind of allowed me. And so I think because we're talking about potentially installing it in 2023, that doesn't put as much pressure on all of the council members to think about the cost for the next year. So, um, oh, another thing that I should probably mention um, just because I did it, but I don't expect it to come to fruition. I know that when I spoke with um, I, one of the IT guys from Dauphin, he said that Tesla will just install chargers because they they sell their cars. Like it, it, if there's chargers, then they're going to sell more cars. Um, and so I did apply to Tesla on behalf of Swan River. Um, I haven't heard anything back, whereas everything else, whenever I applied for something else or whenever I contacted a dif different company in regards to this, I immediately heard back. Um, but um, that is a possibility. And when you're talking about Tesla, you're talking about a supercharger that charges very, very quickly. So. Deputy Mayor Wintoni, then Councillor Bobbitt. Um, Mrs. Kazakoff, thank you very much for uh, coming by. Um, and, and some of your comments are are uh, very intriguing and this has definitely been on my my radar for quite some time now and uh, working doing what I do um, it's part of my list as well and I this is something that our my organization that I work for is, is looking at um, uh, before I get into that uh, just in in terms of planning your route and looking at tourism that type of thing uh, there actually is an EV charger roadmap tourism piece for tourism Manitoba. So um, it's basically a route from here to um, Thompson, I do believe, um, but it's taking on the Highway 6 side and the idea of tourism, Swan Valley tourism, the Chamber of Commerce and Economic Development was to bring that piece onto this side of the number six and have it come through Swan River, um, which is pretty amazing and a, and a pretty cool piece as well. Um, just with that, I, I, I know that you have a, a meeting scheduled tomorrow with a, a very key proponent and uh, um, someone who is very ambitious about sustainability. I can share a little bit with you that uh, there are there was some Natural Resources Canada funding uh, provided to Federated Co-ops Limited for Western Canada to the tune of about 1.4 million dollars um, earmarked for this exact project. So I encourage you to uh, uh, look forward to that conversation okay. tomorrow um, and working with you to solve or to potentially solve this issue. And, and ideally it's something that uh, my organization that I work for would be um, most excited to explore with you. Um, what organization do you I, I'm with the Swan Valley Co-op. I'm the store manager. Oh, okay. Because I, uh, I just knew you were, why not Johnny's, but I know you said that. That was, <laughs> so my, was, that was my former yeah. life. Um, now I'm the uh, store manager with the Swan Valley oh, Co-op. Okay, so awesome. this has been on my on my goals list for quite some time and when we when I did receive the announcement um, a couple of years ago it was it spur it spried interest to me and this is something that we are moving forward with with our organization so we look forward to that conversation tomorrow okay, thank you. Councilor uh, Bobbitt thank you for the presentation I really enjoyed it uh, I guess I'm going to get down to who is going to own the charging station you so, it be the so I, I wouldn't get excited about the amount of money that it's going to make. The charger will cost you $750 a year. Um, that's a flat rate and it's um, by flow. 
Um, so what they do is they handle everything. And so they handle the payment, they handle, um, so what happens when you plug into a charger? Um, so there is a part of, there's an element of how much power you can get from the charger, but it's also, there's an element of how much power your car can take. So when you plug them in, the two of them talk because it, it's an electric car. And so the electric car, for example, Arcona says, no, 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 I don't want that much power. I can only take this much today. And so even when we're plugging into the 100 kilowatt or 200 kilowatt chargers, it still takes 40 minutes. It still takes longer for our car to charge um, because that's just our car's capability. Um, and so Flow handles all of that. So it handles the software, it handles the payment, it handles even the CRA papers because you're going to be making money so you're going to have to pay the CRA and so it submits it to you once a year. And so there is a fee for that, so it's $750. Um, and so um, as um, electric car charging picks up, you might make just a little bit of money but the biggest thing is going to be drawing that tourism in. It's going to be that attraction. It's going to be letting people in the surrounding area own electric cars and drawing them in here to shop. Because I've lost the ability now, or until Yorkton installs one, the ability to go to Yorkton and shop at Yorkton. So I shop here. We We're don't want shopping in Yorkton. <laughs> <laughs> Any further, uh, Councillor um, Freeze? I know nothing about electric cars. Um, when you go to wash your car, you put a slot of money or a money in the slot and you get water. Is this the same way you do for power? Um, so the reason I chose Flow is because it's a Canadian company and they provide exceptional customer service. Anytime that I have called and um, how you operate it is with your smartphone. There's an app. And so you can turn it on remotely. I don't have a smartphone. So the first time that I went, I said, oh no, what am I going to do? I called the number, they helped me. And it ended up that my husband turned it on remotely from here when I was in Dauphin. Um, but then they can send out a card. So it's kind of like a credit card where you just tap it. And so you refill it via that. Um, and so I, I liked dealing with Flow. I got great customer service. When I found out that they were Canadian, I was like, and also just the experience of another small community has installed them and it's gone well. And they've been very honest with me. They're saying, they said, this is not something that's going to make you money. It's an amenity. It's something that you need. So, yeah. Thanks. Councillor Bob. So, I'm going back to the charge again. I don't about money. But so would, when you propose this to the Thomas Warner, would, would private sector come up with as if some private sector in town would be willing to do this, would that be the route you would take? Or do you actually need a municipality to apply for these grants? Um, you need a municipality or a nonprofit to apply for the grants. To apply for the grants? Yes. But, and, and to take ownership? Um, <coughs> uh, are you planning on talking to any of the other municipalities? Uh, no, because, um, uh, well, Dauphin has. Okay. A, a, well, a charger. Well, um, it, it would be nice if Saskatchewan created that um, corridor because I, I do miss Saskatoon, but no, I, I'm not going to talk to the other ministers. So I guess my question would be if there was an individual in town or a private company that wanted to do this, it would still have to go through the town to do it uh, to get the grants? Yes, if they wanted the grants, they would have to go through the town. Otherwise, it would have to be privately owned. The, so that is my in order to get those grants, then it has to be managed and run by the town of Yes. Or you say well, a non-profit. Or a right. non-profit, yeah. Right. The project must be in care and control of whoever is applying for the grant. Okay, so I'm under the impression that we still need to use the town of Swanderer to apply for the grants, but if a private came up, you could still apply for the grants. No. Still have to have a municipality. Yeah. Yeah, um, previously, like, my goal was to come here and ask for permission to apply for the Sustainable Communities Grant. Um, after speaking with Jared Poole, I understand that I need to show you the money. So um, what my request would be um, for today would be, could I please come speak with you at your next meeting? And I'm going to go talk with businesses and see how much money I can kind of stir up and come back 
and so that I can show you that I am committed to this project, that I want to see this through, and that I'm going to. Um, I already spoke with um, Phil Landers, who's the contact for the Parkland region for the Building Sustainable Communities Grant. He said um, if we had a location, and if I had a letter of support from the municipality, that the application would be very strong. And you said the deadline for that application is which? Pardon? The deadline for the application January is? January 17th. Okay. Yeah. Councilor Bob. Yeah. So would the resolution that Councilor uh, Delore is proposing to put forward, would that be covered up? Um, well, I don't, I didn't, so a resolution, no. what were you hoping to? Well, that base, basically a, a resolution would need to be passed for council for it to be the town's position on this. So I'm going to propose that resolution tonight. I hope somebody will second it and we're going to vote on it. And if it passes the vote, then the town's official position is that we're going to pursue this. So that I guess that's what... That, that's the approval. I, I wasn't even <laughs> expecting that. So, okay, all right. After talking with yeah. you, I was like, that's okay. I can do this. I will get money. Just, okay, well, thank you. We can move forward if this resolution is passed tonight. We can give her a letter. Yes. Give her a letter and yeah. Uh, I'd I would, like to thank you for carrying the torch. I like the torch. I think you're on a great presentation. I think you're on a, the right track. Kudos to you. Thank you. Um, the only thing that I would actually, the, the last thing that I would need is a spot. I would need to figure out where this was going to go. Um, they wouldn't give me, so when I called Manitoba Hydro, um, I asked about here and I asked about quick stop and then they were kind of cagey about the other phase three, uh, three phase points in Swan River. And so I think it might be um, beneficial for council to think of where in town. Um, all of your points about space. Absolutely you need space because if you have a crowded parking lot, then frequently cars park in the EV spot, which is not helpful. Um, so if you've got a really large parking lot and the EV spot is out of the way, we don't mind being out of the way. We don't mind walking across the lot. We're just so happy to charge there. Um, that would be something. Um, so, yeah. Um, are, you, are you proposing that you want to come back to our first meeting in January to give us an update exactly on how your meetings with others and perhaps uh, a location? Yes. Even yes. with the support letter, if it's passed tonight, you'll come back on our first meeting in, in January. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, because I, the location is important and um, I would want council's input on that. Um, are, does anybody have any other suggestions in, um, in town as to where a parking lot large enough? Because um, extra foods would probably be another option, but I, I have a soft spot for yeah, I, I think that maybe in your research, maybe, or maybe when you yeah. talk to Mr. Poole about it, we perhaps back, because we can't really, we, we got to move on with the meeting yeah. too. Oh, I'm sorry. And, yeah. and we have, and, but this is important too, but I think that you're going to find some maybe options in the next few weeks as well. Yes. Councillor Bobbitt. Yes, I have one spot, but I, I can't speak for a private individual, individual on their property, so it would have to be talked to them. I have one spot that might pertain to all this. So okay. I'll let you on. There's probably more if we get together. So, I guess I go back to the resolution. <clears throat> You'll be able to move forward with this resolution without a spot being picked, or you need a spot being picked to go with the. I need grant. a spot um, to move forward with the grant. The resolution is incredible because I think that means that I would get my letter of support. Um, a spot would allow me to apply on behalf of the town of Swan River for the grant. That's correct. Yeah. Go That's ahead. right. I just wanted to reiterate that the town. Is aware, council's aware that we are, would be in care and control of that project, and that that's really all we need. Other than that, uh, of course, I would I would give you options to to large parking lots, and, and you can pound the pavement and, and find the best one. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, thank you for the thorough um, presentation. I know some members of council are pretty excited about it, so. Uh, uh, very well done, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the, the beginning of January. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you for coming. Okay. I did happy have holidays and happy new year. Awesome. I did have the resolution 8.3 under new business. Okay.
All right, so moving on then. Uh, Six. Well, I'll get you coffee. Six point one. Result of the building permits 7021 through 7121 with a total estimated value of $652,000 be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. I'm going to quickly just refresh here. Seven. 7.1, result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Bobick. Discussion? Councillor White and then Councillor Morio. I read in there earlier in the day, chips, moving chips. What, what do we use chips for? What kind of chips are you talking about? The landfill, because uh, soil freezes. And uh, so you have to mix in like wood chips, okay. Uh, so that it can be used for cover. What kind of wood chips? Uh, we get the uh, wood shredded wood that comes in, so like um, pallets and soft wood demolition wood or from our own. Uh, just de demolition material okay. that businesses drop off, that contractors yeah. drop off. We shred it yeah. into chips. Got it. No, thank you, Councillor Bobbitt. Oh, sorry, Councillor Morio, then Councillor Bobbitt. You're muted there, Councillor uh, Morio. Hey, um, Mr. Hardy, in your engineering section, you got this doesn't actually like design with airport inspector. Uh, is there an issue with the current lighting system there? Sorry, what was that? You kind of cut out a bit. The uh, actually light design. Is there an issue there that we got to review it or review it? Uh, so that's in discussion with Transport Canada because uh, how it was designed is that a taxiway goes from the apron onto runway 0826 which is the cross strip and taxi the taxiway goes right up to runway 0220 the main one that's lit up and so it was designed that way so two blue lights were not installed where the short little taxiway from the apron comes on to 02, oh sorry, 0826. <coughs> and uh, so we're just in discussion with Transport Canada because they noted, you know, well, you don't have the two blue lights, you only have one blue light when you come onto this runway. Uh, so I just discussed with him that 0826 is not lit up, like it doesn't have edge uh, lights for landing at night. Uh, so I like however many years ago that they were put in, it was just designed as a taxiway so he, he said they would discuss that like the two inspectors uh, so either they'll say yep it is just a taxiway and it'll be fine how it is and if they say no because it's a runway you know maybe at dusk there could be someone landing while someone's taxiing then uh, we just need to install two blue lights one on either side where there's existing blue lights uh, so there'd be a small electrician fee to uh, run some extra wire and then uh, install the two extra lights. Hey, Dr. Councillor Bobbick. Uh, just to go back to the wood chips a bit here, so I, even though they're moving the wood chips, is that not part of the contract for the operator up there? Uh, the contractor shreds, the shredding was added later on, uh, so he has a separate one just to shred it and then we haul it up uh, from where it's shredded to the uh, where he has the fill. I guess my suggestion would be to ask that contractor what the difference in the price would be instead of the town of Swan River loading it, putting it up top, dumping it, and then he picks it up again. I think we're touching it too many times. So if he would get off all the cost, it could save us being out there. Yeah, I can look into that. Yeah, okay, thank you. Council White. Uh, relative to the uh, Dutch elm trees, cutting Dutch elm trees, who, who uh, identifies the trees that need to be cut in, in a pricey form? What is the criteria that we're cutting these 200 year old trees down? Uh, the province has inspectors that they send out every year. So they usually come around August, I believe. And uh, the inspectors are trained to look for the signs of Dutch elm disease tree. And then they flag those ones and they 
put a metal uh, ribbon on it and spray paint a circle around it and then uh, we have until the end of February to cut it flush uh, with the ground and then either chip it or burn it or debark it kind of thing. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. For the discussion? All in favor? It's carry. 7.2, other reports, council, uh, Dipper Mayor Wintoni. Always for the first one on the spot, hey? No, uh, not always. Thank you, Your Worship. <laughs> um, I don't have anything at the moment other than um, to all of our business owners out there, um, again, I, I do sympathize. I understand the, the situations that you're going through. It's never easy. Uh, to deal with the, the crime that is happening in our community and towards your business and uh, you have my support, my attention, my respect for that. Um, on behalf of myself, my wife Jenna and our kids, we wish everyone uh, within the Swan Valley a very Merry Christmas and a very happy and prosperous 2022. Perfect, thank you. Sorry if I put you on the spot. That's okay. I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Friesen. Um, I just wanted to report the uh, Toys for You through Communities of Care was a huge success. Thank you to everyone who contributed toys. Um, I happened to work the one Stampeder night and uh, it was amazing the people come in. We had two huge boxes filled with toys and it was great. Um, don't forget to go to the museum, check out the lights, they're wonderful. And I also would like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you. There are a lot of good lights all over town, like if you drive around. So maybe turn up the heat in here. <laughs> Council Morio. Uh, a couple of things that I've been at. Um, last time I was back in town, administration and myself, we uh, finished up the negotiations with our uh, union uh, counterparts where um, I believe they're all aware that we uh, reached a, a tentative agreement that I believe has been ratified at this point. So uh, good work to the team on that and uh, look forward to uh, being negotiation free now with uh, our union members uh, for the next uh, three more years on a five-year contract. So, um, I had a meeting with uh, the Minister of Infrastructure, Ron Schuler, with a few other council members in attendance where we discussed the intersection uh, 1083 in regards to the left uh, turn lane and what implications and negative implications they're going to have um, to the local businesses in that area where, um, well, I guess we'll be continuing the negotiations and discussions with that department on how to mitigate those things. Um, also, we talked about the um, possibility um, of a full control of the intersection at the corner of the vicinity of 12th Avenue South and Main Street in that area to provide a safe uh, area for people to cross that uh, Main Street area without um, fearing for getting struck by traffic. So, um, Later on in the week, uh, Mr. Poole and myself, we have a meeting with the Justice Department uh, where we strongly uh, brought to their attention that uh, crime is on the increase uh, in the Swan River area and especially the town, um, along with our crime severity index, which is through the roof uh, compared to others. Um, and that even with the uh, report that uh, was provided to us on statistics from the division, uh, the workload in our detachment in Swan River uh, almost tripled that of any other detachment in the province, which is crazy. So for that, uh, we had uh, put the help out request to Justice Department to provide us any resources that they can or suggestions. Um, and we also offered that uh, as part of the policing uh, review, um, one of the topics that they were talking about was uh, the tiered policing uh, model that's going on in other provinces. So um, I offered out that if the province is looking for a pilot project with that similar to what uh, they did with Thompson regarding the community safety officer that uh, 
I'm sure the town would be very eager to uh, entertain those discussions where we can uh, look at that as a part of the project with the product um, to see if that might be something. How we can get more uh, boots on the ground here in the town and the surrounding area. Um, following that, we had a G4 meeting with uh, our neighboring two municipalities where we discussed uh, the fatal bribe and uh, negotiated or discussed the changes to the airport contributions, which uh, will be discussed uh, within our council at a later meeting. And with that, I would like to uh, wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year for myself and Emmett um, and to the rest of the council and all our employees and in the town. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Thank you, uh, okay. Council Morio, and definitely we're happy to hear that we have a tentative agreement as well. So thank you for yourself and your time and, uh, and to our staff and admin staff for uh, getting that to uh, resolve. So thank you. Councillor Balvik. Uh, yes, I also attended the meeting with MIT there, uh, just uh, Mr. Uh, Councillor uh, Morio more or less said it all. Just did it in a conversation with uh, Mr. Harvey today. We also spoke a little bit. We may be careful when we ask for things in the 11th and 12th Street there that we may need to look at some of our streets there that the traffic may turn and go down there and use them for corridors instead of Main Street where more lights and stops you put on them. We'll have to take a long, hard look at some of the streets that may be used by trucks and stuff and different things to get away from too many stop lights or deterrent. So we should have a long, hard look at that as we move forward with that. Um, was at a convention with the watersheds in Brandon a couple weeks ago, attended the MA AGM, which is the Manitoba Association of Watersheds. Um, MA is uh, more or less the leader of all the watersheds, I should say. They, uh, they operate about an $800,000 grant or funds every year, so they uh, do lots of the advertising, all the legal stuff for all the watersheds here. So we attended that when we were there. Also when I was there, there was a Miss McKay from Pine Creek. She is involved with the Center for Indigenous Environmental Resources. She did a, a delegation in her, I did for about an hour, spoke on how to get the Indigenous people involved in the community and with the watershed was a very, very good uh, very interesting comment. So I think Watershed is probably looking at moving forward on some of this stuff and involving them in the watersheds. If we can, uh, actually a lot of our watersheds end up in their territories and, and communities. So well, I'm sure we'll be moving forward with that. Watershed, uh, this year we've done 16 to 17, 18 projects in rough speaking. Uh, there's probably been 10 to 15 well abandoned sites on top of that. We've been probably put $500,000 worth of projects into the valley this year. Also with that we now have a grow program which is estimated to be in the next 10 years to inject $5 million into the valley through the grow program which will pay farmers for not cultivating wet holes or in buffer zones and stuff like that. So. There's new programs coming out with the watershed all the time. Uh, looking really good for the watersheds. Uh, they're managing lots of stuff. Uh, just quickly met where I talked with uh, Mr. Harvey and just impressed I met with uh, Mr. Van Cleek down at the shop and just had a quick conversation and asked him how things go. I was impressed the track he's taking, I should say. I liked what I heard. I think things are very good at the town shop. Um, the route he's taken, I was, I was impressed with. So also, I'd like to congratulate them on, on seeing out there in the cold, fixing the Timberlands problem there on the weekend. That's a pretty cold, bitter day, and they were there a long time. They got it done. Everybody was happy they had breakfast on Sunday, so it actually worked out very well. <laughs> Just one more thing. I would like to propose a challenge to council here tonight for COPP. I would like to donate a hundred dollars worth of gas or coffee, and I would challenge every councillor to add the same amount. Okay, fair enough. <clears throat> and Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs> Thank you. Give me your money. I got it. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Bobbick. Uh, councillor White. Uh, 
Thank you. He's choked yeah. up on that. I idea. also attended the, the Chief Forum meeting. It's always interesting <laughs> to uh, get together with our neighbors and watch things evolve for the better as a rule. Uh, the airport commission we attended on the 8th and some of the topics we looked at were the, the car lock system and fuel, who pays for it when, uh, land use, uh, spray companies, private entities who can buy and or rent. Uh, we looked at the, the format through which the commission exists, how do we provide water to the spray planes, uh, possible fuel prices, to name a few. So that airport commission uh, does a lot of wonderful things. And I can advise uh, the community that it's still being managed by the Talos Fund River at, at the present and will stay for over five years. The which, sorry? The airport commission will be managed by our town for yeah, five, years. five years. So I think that's wonderful news for our community. Then I had the uh, PMH meeting. Uh, I can let you know that a local person, uh, Tanya Powell, has been selected from as a community representative on the PMH subcommittee for HR. It'd be nice to have Tanya's input. Then we went to Dauphin for the uh, announcement of the new endoscopy and chemotherapy monies. I think uh, five million bucks, whatever, plus or minus. And we met with the Minister of Health and the Premier to talk about uh, health care in our, in our area. Of course, we talked about the uh, CT scan. I had the opportunity to attend the MI meeting with the other councillors and the left turn. And it, it certainly Lot, causes me to make a better, closer look at when things are proposed to try to look at the fine print because obviously I missed some of that fine print. So I believe that Mr. Poole is looking at sending out a survey uh, advising the community, let's have a look at this again, not that we're against it for a second, we certainly want it, but there's some uh, concepts in there that may not be best for our business community. Another PMH meeting, COVID is still here, guys, uh, and I think we've heard enough that we've got to be prepared. Uh, I attended the Swan Valley Business Consortium meeting, which uh, I always learn a lot. They talk about health, crime, sharks. I think there's 20 some places for sharks. And I went with uh, Sergeant Henson in the fall and we picked up part of a team. Now our team picked up 20 some sharks left here and there willy nilly on the ground. So if we have certain spots where sharks, which are the needles used by people who have a, a significant problem, I had the pleasure of working uh, for the Legion. I'm an associate member of the Legion, and they asked us uh, to help ring the bell for collecting. Uh, the co-op provided the, the space, which was kind of them. The Lions Club also participated in that. And the generosity overwhelmed me. I just I cannot believe uh, how much money people put into that little pot. I would say five to ten was the average. There was more and there was less, so that was uh, a good thing. Then I, I think it's important to report also this afternoon uh, uh, Councillor Bobak and myself met with uh, Mr. Poole with the RCMP. I don't think we can say it enough that we have to report everything that's suspicious. If they don't have evidence, they can't act. They don't have a phone call. This guy was here then at 9.45. Whenever it was, may not seem like having walked, saw a guy walking down your back lane in the middle of the night. Report that time. And then all of a sudden they get him here, there, and there. Uh, they can tie it together. Uh, it's interesting to note that the crimes that the RCMP uh, Recent that are happening, they are happening by and large when they are on patrol, not in the down times. And a compliment to our COPP teams, there's two RCMP cars and a citizen on patrol cars all arrived at the scene where one issue was happening. So our teams are, are out there certainly doing a lot. So it's communication, communication. They have an online communication reporting medium, which I'm hoping will show up soon in our local media when they get together. So uh, we, we don't have to phone, we don't have to go there, you can do it online. And I love the idea of a town hall meeting in the future where our community can come out and uh, give accolades, give suggestions, and uh, stay positive. To suggest, uh, I also think it's important for the community to know that the town of Swan River, as all communities are, this isn't something that just popped up and we're just reacting to now. I can tell you that we've met with the local RCMP regularly in the last year or two because it's been getting a little ugly. We met with the Dauphin RCMP. We met with the uh, council of the, uh, the city of, of Dauphin. We met with the D division, who are the bosses of our local RCMP in Brandon and or Winnipeg. We meet with our MLA. We meet with uh, through uh, our team with the COPP people. This is not something we're just reacting to. We've been on this for a while, and are we as successful as we like? Certainly not. Uh, without evidence, they can't do anything. I encourage you to nudge your own MLA or any people you know in government about these concerns. So that's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
Councilor Delorier. Uh, I had a library board meeting. Um, we uh, looks like we'll be finishing the year in a surplus at the library, um, but we're still down one board member. I know we had put a ad in the in the uh, town section of the page some number of months ago. Would we be able to run that again? That we're looking for. You put my name as a contact and give me a call if they want to be on the library board. Can you board member? Yeah. yeah. Um, then I also attended the meeting with Mr. Schuler regarding uh, regarding the intersection by uh, Quick Stop Subway. There, <coughs> and proposed the proposal of the uh, the survey with where it was either the roundabout or the turn signal. And I I wish I could say they received our criticism better, but I don't think they received it very well. That their survey was not very clear. They did not want to hear that. Their efforts to reach out were not that great, um, so I hope we didn't burn any bridges by uh, by sharing that that bit of information. But I think I think we are absolutely in the right that most people don't realize what it was they were voting for. That there are concrete barriers that will be just as detrimental for all the reasons that they didn't want the roundabout. They'll be just as detrimental with the intersection as it was proposed. The province was very adamant that they go with the will of the people. I can understand that over the last number of years they've gotten beat up pretty bad over not listening to the uh, grassroots Manitobans. So I understand where they're coming from, but I think that people didn't know. And it may have been a vote against the roundabout, and I get that, but I think um, it was a, uh, I think it was for all the reasons that they didn't like the roundabout, they will not like what's being proposed here with the intersection. Let's just paint some lines and put a turn light, a turning light up. That's, but it, it doesn't seem to be the way forward. So I think uh, we need to do something to let people know that this is coming. Um, and I don't think people are going to be happy with it. So uh, other than that, um, had a watershed uh, board meeting where we were on a Saturday and we spent, uh, spent the day reviewing policies. We have some policies strengthened to, uh, to be able to uh, have give us a little bit more teeth when dealing with delinquent accounts so um, th that's a, a good thing going forward um, and uh, we will be uh, up for re-election to the board here in January um, other than that I wish everybody a Merry Christmas okay thank you so a little uh, different I'm going to change it up a little bit and since it's our last uh, meeting of the year I'm going to let our directors maybe have uh, a last word as well so Mr. Harvey to put you on the spot I'm going to put you first. Uh, yeah so this is my first year in this role and uh, definitely been a learning experience. Uh, a few capital projects uh, for the utility that are uh, still underway but we had some good partnerships with uh, the Manitoba Water Services Board uh, for the generator for the uh, PLC upgrade and uh, for the lagoon uh, environmental impact assessment. Uh, we had a good partnership with uh, Manitoba Infrastructure to get Main Street repaved. Um, so that was nice to see that the two levels of government can work together to get that done for efficiency. And uh, you know, looking forward to uh, next year. Thank you. Uh, Chief Fedorchuk. Oh, he's in a phone call with the OSC. Right? Okay. Uh, uh, Director B. Fedorchuk. Yeah, kind of mimicking Darren's statement there. A uh, new role this year for me as well, just continuing to learn and adjust as needed with COVID. It was really nice to see everybody back in direct facilities enjoying themselves. Um, after the COVID break, and hopefully that continues. And have a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Thank you. See you, Fogadita. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. And same to you. Uh, see you, Pool. Uh, I guess I apologize, Council, for no written report. Uh, but we will have a year in review. Uh, I'm sure in our budget meetings during January. Uh, I just want to add that I'm excited to work with Mrs. Kazakoff. Uh, <clears throat> she did very well tonight 
and uh, I'm sure she'll do so in the future. Uh, just to highlight a few things uh, that are still going on, not so much our year in review yet, but we are still looking for a, a meeting with Minister Gordon, as promised at the AMM. So uh, we're still inquiring of that. Uh, the office did send the Northwest Métis, Northwest Métis Council a development agreement to that organization, so uh, hopefully that's under review. Myself and Director uh, Fedorchuk are, are reviewing proposals for how to, uh, or when we'll present to Council uh, options for the arena, so stay tuned for those in the new year. Uh, ongoing work with purchase services, which we'll discuss later tonight. And uh, just as a notable recognition, uh, uh, Brendan Fedorchuk's been with the town for 10 years, so uh, I'm going to plan that he'll come to the next meeting and maybe we'll contact the Star of Times for a picture uh, for him to receive his certificate, as well as our foreman Jordan Rux has been here for 20 years. Nice. So uh, big thanks to those uh, employees. Absolutely. <laughs> And uh, just to thank my team, I know that uh, I may not be the easiest, and, and uh, specific thanks to CFO Ganita for bringing me down to earth sometimes uh, when I get too far away, but uh, just thanks to everyone for, for backing me up. Okay, thank you. For myself, um, uh, I like the fact that when uh, Councillor Bob had brought up from his uh, one of his meetings that they talked about bringing in Indigenous leaders and, and, and councils you know, in the fold, and, and that was one of the things that we talked about at the G4, and I think it's important that we continue on that, on that journey if it's uh, a one-time one or two-time affair that we have or, or a, a summit of some kind, but it's something that we're definitely going to work on uh, in the new year. And uh, also in the new year, I'm just guessing at maybe our first cow meeting, we're going to have to have a discussion about the future of RISE and the importance of economic development and where we're moving. And all councils have been uh, challenged with that, and we'll see where that goes uh, in, in the new year. Everybody spoke about a lot of important things, and uh, it's good to see that we have a good uh, council that's involved in the community and cares for the community. And uh, for me, I'd, I'd like to thank, firstly, our administration and the staff for their time and efforts uh, through the year and, and the years ahead. I want to thank CEO Poole for taking on the new role, and we look forward to working with him and, uh, and how we're going to make this organization, this community, uh, better in the days and, and years ahead. On a council perspective, I think I'd like to thank your spouses and your family for their support in your positions that you serve into your community and the sacrifices that means it involves. To this council, as we head into the final months of this mandate, we have plenty of work to do. And we've done a lot of work just by some of the discussions that we've had. And this was going to be a transitional type of uh, mandate. And I look forward for us to attempt in those accomplishments and these tasks. It's not easy. And we, uh, we work very hard at this, and we care deeply for the short term and the long term for the prosperity of our community. Again, I'd like to welcome Councillor Bobbick to the team this year, and uh, we welcome your expertise and your wisdom uh, that you will add. Thank you. To our community, as we struggle through another pandemic year, my hopes we will see the end of this. In the past year, it was great to see people out again and some of the lockdowns were lifted to see many of our missed businesses back again. And I certainly hope that this next round will be short-lived. As we know, it's hard on a small business community, and I would like to see uh, people continue to support local as much as possible. I know it's been painful for to see crime in our community, and it hits us very hard in many ways. As for one person who has lived here all my life, but we need to work together with our RCMP, the consortium, COPP, chamber. I want to say we hear you, and we're working with these groups on this, but we must work together and communicate together to get us through this. From my family to everyone, we wish you the best of the holiday season 
and the best of 2022. I wish you all a Merry Christmas. Moving on to 8.1, result of the grant request from the Swan River North Hero Club to reduce their rental fee for their Legion Room and the Veterans Community Hall for their annual Christmas party be resolved, or, uh, sorry, be uh, approved. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. How, how it says reduced by by how much are we eliminating it or what what is yeah i was wondering the same thing <coughs> excuse me because that was the request to have it reduced but uh, there was not a, actually a number that was in the letter said that uh how much it was going to be reduced to or by no i, I believe they're asking for to be eliminated a grant in, if in granted lieu of Uh, go ahead um, I guess that was along my lines too um, I would I would uh, rather see a concrete number whether or not it's a um, a grant in lieu I'm not sure what reduce their rental fee wouldn't exactly mean and I would rather see it as a grant in lieu okay uh, Councillor Delorier did you have something uh, well, my, I guess do we do we know what the what the rental fee is? Uh, you know, I I do not know offhand. Do you does council want to uh, to uh, amend this resolution? Councilor uh, Friesen, or who's next here? Sorry, Councilor Morio. Um, yeah, I was just going to say I'd be willing to make a motion to amend the resolution to make a grant in lieu of the rental fee for that uh, event. I'll, I'll support that. Okay, so then the mover and the seconder? That's us. Yeah. So who's making the motion? King Hudson okay. Memorial oh, okay. to amend. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, do you accept that? Yeah. Okay. So it is. is it? Wow. Result of the grant request from the Swan River North Hero Club to grant their rental fee for the Legion Room in the Veterans Community Hall for their annual Christmas party be approved. That was moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Further discussion? Councillor Delorier. Not to be picky, but can I propose a second amendment that it be for, for this year only due to the COVID-19 pandemic? Is it one time? Yeah. Okay. We're getting oh, into, sure. deep into this because it was Councillor Morio, but uh, I guess uh, this is another amendment, so. I'm good with that. That's exactly. Me too. So, okay, so on the tail end of that, uh, sorry, I guess I'll result of the grant request from the Swan River North Hero Club to grant their rental fee for the Legion Room in the Veterans Community Hall for the 2021 Christmas party be approved. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.2. Wow, I don't have a resolution there. Mm -hmm. We'll wait till that loads up there. It's like with uh, New Holland? Ah, uh, case. Yeah, case. Sorry. Case 570 Yeah. I'll just pull it off of the decision paper. Oh, here it is. Sorry. I've got it if you don't. Okay. 
We're good. Missing something there. Oh, here, I'll just put in the last one. <coughs> oh, I see what you did there. Sorry. <clears throat> there, I just updated it. Okay, there we are. Result the town swanner purchase a case 570N from Hilltrack for 136817 plus applicable taxes. Moved by. Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion, Councillor Bobbick. So I'm, like you said, new to the game here. This has been put in your budget. This was in last year's budget. That's right, it was okay. budgeted before. Okay. So in the replacement here, we're replacing a what to a where? Uh, there was a Ford tractor that was used uh, for the, it had a three point hitch for scraping back lanes. Uh, doing some loading around the yard, uh, cutting trees, assisting with snow removal. So this new unit will be substantially be able to do the back alleys better? It should be of uh, the box scraper. Yeah. Plus it's almost indicated to me that it would be way more efficient for the loading of sand and stuff in the winter time because you'll have the unit to be able to load the sanding truck. Yeah, it'll just be another unit that's in the yard, so they can be quicker with that. They don't have to pull something back. Because this is kind of a new item to the equipment line, right? How will it replace the Ford tractor? Yeah, but it, it couldn't do what this thing does. That's right, yeah, it's an upgrade. Okay, okay. okay. Councilor Morio. Um, Mr. Harvey, I believe um, the price here, what did we budget in the budget for this? Uh, we budgeted 110000 so it is over. 110. And then, um, but we also got a good value at the auction for that uh, old Ford tractor, did we not? Yeah, we got, I believe it was around 15000 but I'd have to double check. Right, so that was, uh, could make, that would make up the difference between what was budgeted and, and use that, like that revenue to make up the difference in the, the numbers, correct? Yeah, I would go towards that. Okay, thank you. That's an excellent point. Uh, Councillor Bobbick. Just with some of that, you can see that in the new hall in there, or speaking with Mr. Harvey, it didn't meet all the specifications, added some of the things, and plus we in talking with that, we thought the resale value at the end of the lifetime of this machine would be great higher on the case, so that was one of the decisions that was why it was put forward. Good point. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.3. <clears throat> wow. Whereas electric and hybrid vehicles made up 3.5% of all vehicle sales in 2020 and are poised to make up 4.6% of all vehicle sales in 2021. With this number, only forecast forecasted increase in the coming years as vehicle manufacturers work towards meeting the federal government's mandated that electric vehicles make up 50% of vehicles sold by 2030. And whereas Swan River is already isolated with regards to transportation, with the decrease in bus, ser bus service, absence of air service, the lack of electric charging infrastructure with only, will only isolate us further for a segment of the population that is growing rapidly. And whereas the town of Swan River recognizes that have, having fast charging capabilities locally will ensure that we are able to continue to promote ourselves as both a tourist destination as well as a place where travelers can still stop to refuel on their travels for an ever-growing por po portion of the motoring population. Therefore, be it resolved that the administration of the town of Swan River began begin planning and working towards having a level three fast charging station installed in the town of Swan River in 2022. This directive shall be conditional on receiving the Manitoba Building Sustainable Communities Grant, which has an application deadline of January 17th, and the Federal Natural Resource Zero Emission Vehicle Infrastructure Grant with an application intake of early 2022. Therefore, be it resolved 
that the planning of the location of this charging station should include a criteria of ability to expand with additional charging stations in the future. That's moved by Councillor Delorier and was seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Can you read that again? <laughs> <laughs> it's on a piece of paper. <laughs> All in favor? It's carried. 9.1. Result of the application for conditional use number 2, 2021 to allow the owner to move a modular home onto residential property to be approved. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? Okay. Councilor Bobbitt? Has this gone through the Planning Commission? Yeah, this went, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, this went uh, on last council's meeting. There oh, okay, was a public right. hearing for that. Okay, well, there was no objections? No. Not a no. Okay, all in favor? It's carried. 10.1. Result of bylaw 15 2021 being a bylaw to establish a road improvement reserve fund be read a third time and passed. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Recorded vote. All in favor? It's unanimous. It's carried. <coughs> 10.2, result of bylaw 16, 2021, being a bylaw to establish a Lagoon Improvement Reserve Fund, be read a second time. Moved by Councilor Deborah Mayor Wintoni, second by Councilor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.3, Result of bylaw 16, 2021, being a bylaw to establish a Lagoon Improvement Reserve Fund, be read a third time and passed. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Recorded vote. All in favor? It's carried. It's unanimous. 11, 11.1. Result of the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General general accounts checks number 28363 to number 28448, totaling $241,609.90 as listed on Schedule A. Checks number 28385 was voided as the purchase was paid by credit card. Payroll accounts checks number 4998 to number 5004, totaling 84801 and 17 cents as listed on Schedule B. Payroll accounts checks number 5005 to number 5009, totaling 11732 and 52 cents as listed on Schedule C. Direct deposits the amount of 6317 and 36 cents as per Schedule D. Direct deposits totaling seventeen thousand three hundred and fifty-eight and seventy-eight cents, as listed in Schedule E. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Bobick. Discussion, Councillor White. Yes, uh, check number. You probably know the answer. Twenty-eight three ninety-seven Rough Country Agriculture, four hundred ninety-two seventy-eight for trail cameras. Mr. Harvey. That uh, was at the uh, public workshop. We had, uh, that was for beefing up the security. We had a few uh, midnight visitors. So we're trying to see if we could capture some faces when they come in. I think it's wonderful. I encourage we spend a little more personally. Further, dis thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? <coughs> it's carried. 11.2. Whereas sections 163 of the Municipal Act provides that a council may adopt an interim operating budget to have effect only until the council adopts the operating budget for the fiscal year. Now therefore be it resolved that the following interim budget, operating budget, be adopted for the year 2022. 
general operating requirements, general government services, 800,000, protective services, 1.9 million, transportation, transportation services, 1 million, environment health services, 1.2 million, public health and welfare services, 200,000, regional planning and development, 40,000, resource conservation and industrial development, 120,000, recreation and cultural services, 1.4 million, fiscal services, 800,000, and water and, service, water and ser sewer services, 1.3 million. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion, Councillor uh, Bobic. Protective services, does that involve RCMP and fire department? Yes. Okay, thank you. Further discussion, Councillor Delorier. I noticed a lot of these are, are pretty, some of them even surpassed probably the amounts we'll budget in 2022. Um, and I know we used to not put them this high. Is there a reason why we do, or, or how, how did we come up with these numbers, I guess? Because um, I, I know like this, I think we budgeted 1.6 million in 2021 for RCMP, or for all protective services. So you know, I'm, just, I'm just wondering how we came up with these numbers. CFO Ganita. I took the numbers that are in the budget that's being developed now for 2022 as it stands now. So I'm sure there'll be a lot more changes to come, but that's the numbers that all the directors have put in thus far. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.3, resulted the $50,000 contribution budgeted in the 2021 financial plan to be made from the utility operating fund to the Lagoon Improvement Reserve Fund, moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick. Why? Sorry? Why is that happening? Why are what? you transferring from the water and sewer to the Mr. Lagoon? Harvey? Uh, so a Lagoon Improvement uh, Reserve Fund uh, that was set up as part of the rate study and so it's to have money set aside for the improvement of the lagoon. So we're doing the environmental impact assessment right now, uh, but when it comes to construction, we will be have some funds for that construction instead of borrowing or uh, raising taxes or okay. raising rates. Okay, so in other words, Last year you didn't budget for this, so you're just going to move it from water and sewer to use it? Uh, it was budgeted, but I don't think the uh, the fund was set up yet. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Eleven point four. Whereas the 2021 financial plan for the utility operating fund included 155,000. $487 transfer to the utility reserve, be it hereby resolved that the lesser of the $155,487 or the utility operating fund net operating surplus for the 2021 fiscal year be transferred from the utility operating fund to the water and sewer reserve fund. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? Councilor Morio, did you have something? No. Okay, all in favor? It's carried. 11.5. Whereas the town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private work <coughs> on private property of the Municipal Act Clause 252E and set the fees and charges for the works under Clause 252-1A of the Act, and where a sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached Schedule A, totaling $7,192.61. Therefore, be it resolved, each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A be added to the corresponding ta property tax roll and collected in that manner under subsections 252.2 of the Act. Be it further resolved that notice be sent 
to each property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and, and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective January the 1st, 2022. Moved by Councilor Delorier, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11-6. Maybe trying to dodge these long ones. <clears throat> Whereas section, sections 365 2 of the Municipal Act provides that council may in any year designate the immediately preceding year or any earlier year as the year for which property, the taxes in respect of which are in arrears for the year, must be offered for sale by auction to recover the tax arrears and costs. Be it resolved that the designated year for which properties in arrears be offered for sale by auction be 2021, meaning all properties with outstanding taxes from the year 2021 or prior, and be for it resolved in accordance to sections 363.1 of the Municipal Act, costs shall be actual costs incurred for each parcel listed for the 2022 tax sale plus an administration fee of $50 as set forth in the Manitoba Regulation 5097 and be it further resolved that the 2022 tax sale be held Wednesday, September the 14th at 2022 at 2 p.m. in the Town of Swan River Council Chambers and that tax service will be, will be hired to manage the tax sale for the town during the fiscal year 2022. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Just the last paragraph there, it should read, I think, September 14th, 2022, not 2021. Yeah, I, I read it as that, as, but, but you're yeah. right, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Correct. Just wanted to make sure. Discussion? Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> okay, back to 11-7. Resolve that financial statements for the 11 months ending November 30th, 2021 be adopted as received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? All in favor? Oh. Carried 11.8. Whereas the capital budget for the year 2021 included $40,000 for sidewalks to be borne by a federal gas tax reserve, but the final cost for such has not yet been determined. Therefore, be it resolved that once the final cost of the sidewalk capital project has been determined, the lesser of the $40,000 or the final total cost be transferred from the federal gas reserve tax, or sorry, uh, federal gas tax reserve fund to the general operating fund. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 11.9. Whereas the capital budget for the year 2021 included $320,000 for Main Street curb and gutter, asphalt and sidewalks to be borne by federal gas tax reserve, but the final total cost for such has not yet been determined. Therefore, be it resolved that once the final total cost of the Main Street capital project has been determined, the lesser of the $320,000 or the final total cost be transferred from the Federal Gas Tax Reserve Fund to the General Operating Fund. Moved by Councillor Baldick, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 1110. Whereas the capital budget for the year 2021 included tractor and attach with attachment attachments to be borne by machinery replacement reserve, <coughs> therefore be it resolved that $136,817 plus applicable taxes be transferred from the machinery replacement reserve fund to the general operating fund. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? All in favor? 
Scary. 1111. Resolve that 95000 be transferred from the accumulated surplus to the general operating fund as was included in the 2021 financial plan. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wentoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 1112. Whereas the town of Swan River borrowed by bylaw 14 2021 the amount of $594,328 during the 2021 fiscal year for the repair and renovation of the Richardson Recreation and Wellness Whirlpool HVAC and Building Envelope. And whereas the $73,163 cost to repair the Whirlpool was expended in 2020 fiscal year. Therefore, be it resolved that the $73,163 be transferred from the general operating fund to the recreation facilities reserved for major repairs in the 2021 fiscal year to be available for future needs. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> 1113. Whereas the province of Manitoba discontinued the municipal road improvement program and advised by letter dated April the 9th, 2019, that the annual operating, sorry, the municipal operating basket funding now includes $61,500 to support ongoing critical infrastructure, infrastructure needs. And whereas the town of Swan River received the $61,500 as part of its basket funding for each of the fiscal years 2019, 20, and 21, totaling $184,500. And whereas it appears the town may incur an operating surplus in its general operating fund for the 2021 fiscal year, and whereas the town by bylaw 15 2021 established a road improvement reserve fund to finance the cost of road improvements when needed. Be it hereby resolved that the lesser of the $184,500 or the 2021 general operating fund surplus be transferred from the general operating fund to the road improvement reserve fund once the surplus has been determined. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, second by Councilor Morio. Discussion? Councilor Bobbitt. What if there isn't a surplus? Then I won't go in. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Resolved that pursuant to sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. We have a uh, purchase service uh, discussion. Moved by Councillor Bobic, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera. Good. 15 items arising out of camera, 15.1. Resolved that the Town of Swan River Administration approved the purchase service agreement from the Municipality of Swan Valley West as per Schedule A. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick. Uh, just at this point in time, when there was a discussion for what we've had here, I will be voting against this motion because I have no idea how it explained to a repair why they would be subsidizing the municipality of Swanbury West by paying their taxes. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Again, um, I completely understand the need and the will for all communities to, or all municipalities to work together to achieve um, agreements when it comes to purchase services. However, I, however, I, due to, uh, the conversation that was had, I am unable to justify the means into which the numbers are derived for this, and I will be voting against this agreement. Further discussion? Councilor Baldwin? Can I have a recorded vote, please? Okay. 
Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of this regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 10.57 p.m. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned. Merry Christmas.